Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On tonight's segment, we're going live with a midweek recap and an NWSL live recap, excuse me, of tonight's games and Saturday's games as well. Thank you all for joining us live. As always, please subscribe to us on YouTube for NWSL extended highlights, exclusive interviews, our live recaps, and so much more. YouTube.com slash attacking third. Hit subscribe. It helps us out big time. Thank you all so, so much for joining us. Quick content note as well before we get into all this. We're going live on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. To for the next few weeks to talk about Wednesday matches and weekend games. So again, make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on these moments where we can all be together live. And Lisa, I'm here live with you once more. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? I am so good. Um, I am so hype after these games. We had like a light. It was like a snack on Saturday. It was just two games <laughs> in the NWSL and then a big old meal today on Sunday with four games it was a great way to end the weekend uh, but yes i'm excited to chat with you about it we're going live like a little earlier than usual because yeah. last game didn't kick off or, or did kick off at 7 eastern so it's it's 9 20 here on the east coast um i'm excited let's dive into this because this last game was just nuts and everyone is sorry i'm like a little add like all over the place right yeah. now everyone in our chat is shouting out your hat right now so oh, i gotta give mad props to the hat Can oh you i love it what it says yeah it's a it's a it's a throwback it's a throwback uh chicago bulls 1996 championship hat wow you know always gotta rip your set Go i love bulls. that i've been watching um like it's been a chaotic week, as you know. Like we're gonna, we've gone live multiple times. We had midweek matches, and there were some moments where I had to like center, like refocus and center myself. So there were like moments this week where I was like, let me throw something on and try to like have it on in the background as I get, as I'm getting into work zone. And it was like Michael Jordan's and the Bulls Last Dance documentary. Oh, such so a I was good like, job. let me throw on a couple. And like this has been, um, <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm also gonna rock the hat as well. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody. Appreciate y'all. It's the little things, right? That making me oh, smile. Yeah. Um, but we're here to cover uh, soccer. We're here to cover NWSL, oh, yeah. and we've got uh, several matches to to go through. I like how you put it, Lisa. A snack. It was just a snack on Saturday because we no, went from a double header to a quadruple header on Sunday. So since everyone's joining us live as these games have ended, we're going to kick things off with, quite frankly, the game that just ended. Let's talk about Orlando Pride versus Chicago Red Stars. This one ending in a in a really chaotic way because it had to, right, Lisa? Like, we should have predicted that, that this is the last game on the Sunday slate of games. So this was the game that was going to not walk away in peace. It was going to have chaotic energy in the final 10 minutes. And it did this one ending in a 4-2 scoreline. Chicago Red Stars, though, taking all three points. Uh, the action coming in this one, not super uh, early. I was looking for the early goal from Orlando, quite frankly, but uh, Chicago Red Stars had different ideas in this one. Uh, they, they got on the board in, in the 11th minute and uh, by way of a rookie goal. So shout out to Sarah Griffith for uh, racking up her first regular season uh, pro goal. Yeah, this was huge. I, I think you said it best, Sandra. The first half of this game didn't have that much i mean compared to the last 10 minutes of this game the last 20 yeah. minutes of this game um but because of that it it did allow for so much to be opened up in the second half because this game was played in Orlando at Exploria Stadium. Um, we knew Mallory Pugh was available off the bench as a substitute, which is the first time that she's even been available in a regular season game. And to not see her not get the start was not at all surprising, knew that she needed to kind of work her way back into things. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, for Chicago to get on the board first against a team like Orlando Pride that has historically throughout the regu this regular season scored in the first I'm going to give them five minutes but it's been like four minutes mostly um, that was crucial for Chicago to keep Orlando off the board and instead impose their game onto Orlando a little bit and and you could tell that Chicago hasn't played for a minute and they were yeah. feeling healthy and they were looking pretty fresh but um yeah to to get off on the board first for Chicago that was huge and then in the second half I mean it was bam it bam was bam action because <laughs> Mallory Pugh came on at the halftime as well so that was 
also a bit of a game changer. I think for Chicago, knowing that they now have Mallory Pugh, who's been itching to get back on the pitch and, and gunning for it throughout the first 45 minutes, and I'm sure at halftime, a vocal Pew with her teammates, uh, encouraging them to do different things or, or where the open space was. Because as a player who traditionally plays 90 minutes, maybe 80 will give for Pew, yeah. to then be sidelined for – not just 45 minutes, but also multiple games and be able to watch your team um, play on the pitch. And then for 45 minutes, knowing that you're most likely going to play at the second half, at the start of the second half, I'm sure that was communicated with her, to watch the first 45 minutes and be able to find the holes and and you you are studying the game from a different perspective. And that's exactly what Pew did because as soon as she stepped on the pitch, it was, yeah. uh, it was Pew's game. <laughs> I was a little, I was a little thrown off, honestly, because I, I was, I was curious. It was something with, with Mel Pugh being off for these last several weeks. They were, they were taking it really easy with her with, with the initial concussion diagnosis and she was participating in training and then they were, you know, guiding her through contact and stuff like that. So it was like, she was doing some, some stuff on the ball, you know, on her own and then more with team and then actual contact. So they were, you know, with this early in the season, they were taking it easy. So I was a little curious with this game where she was kind of given the green light, what type of yeah. minute restriction it would look like. So I was a little curious is that it was an actual going to be a full 45 minutes plus. Yeah. But knowing that uh, this Orlando Pride team had had a number of games under their belt before getting to this Sunday, I would imagine that some of the space that they saw being given to them in that first half, they wanted to maybe try to expose a little bit more and capitalize on in that second half. And that's that's absolutely what we saw from from Mel Pugh. I mean, she she got on and the first thing she did was record an assist for the <laughs> Chicago Red Stars. But it was almost like she had just so much time to make a decision with I the know. ball at her feet. Just outside the box, and she's—you could just see, like in her body language, was like, "Okay, well, I'm just gonna dink this this way and see yeah. what happens." And all of a sudden, Bianca San George scores this ridiculous goal from this ridiculous angle, and uh, they have the the go ahead goal there. And then obviously, we saw them continue to to add on the goals. But there were moments throughout it where you just there were absolute vibes in this game where I was like, "Okay, there it looks like there's a team here that has played." some extended minutes this week, uh, you know, a midweek match. And there's yeah. another team that hasn't played a midweek match, but Chicago, like you mentioned, this is, is a team that hasn't been able to sort of get into uh, a rhythm in this regular season yet, just due to some of the, the challenge cup overlap and, and stuff like that. That's really what it was. Just Chicago trying to get a little bit of consistency and, and that's almost maybe why the first half was a little slower and a little more predictable and not as much action because throughout the second half is when this game really unfolded. I think Vanessa DiBernardo in the midfield was, was phenomenal for Chicago um, being really influential in, in the ways that she was contributing to the attack. You mentioned Bianca St. George's getting the second goal for Chicago. I was super happy about that too. Her her second goal of the regular season and a player that in the absence of Mallory Pugh has stepped up as a forward in St. George's and to continue to do that and, and shine alongside Pugh is very promising for the future of the Chicago Red Stars this year when they have to go through a lot of rotation. But Sandra, we've got to talk about the last 10, 15 minutes <laughs> of this match because yeah. – Orlando is is trying to gain a bit of possession. They're they're trying to gain a bit of momentum, um, and there ends up being a penalty kick called inside the box um, yeah. against Chicago, and yeah. it is it is Sydney Larue who lines up over top of this ball. This is the eighty first minute, and it's smart. It, I loved it. <laughs> it was, I mean, a. Sydney Lerou is the right person to line up over this one, and it is saved by Alyssa Nair yeah. and saved phenomenally, like dives on top of it, doesn't let it go anywhere from her reach. And uh, immediately there's a response uh, in, in this kind of moment happening because Orlando was a little ticked off, and Sydney Lerou was then – running this field, which we see LaRue, this happens to her so often. She gets a fire lit under her and, and not scoring that penalty kick. That was the match to light that fire. And Orlando, they're able to get on the board. Uh, just two minutes later, a goal from Amy Turner. Um, this was a really, really good goal from Orlando. Where was the Chicago defense? There was no one marking Amy Turner on the back post. So this was 83rd minute. And then down on the other side of the pitch, 86th minute, another penalty kick called this time in favor of Chicago Mallory Pugh steps up to take it you love to see that 
she does hit it right down the middle. It, it is saved <laughs> by Aaron McLeod. So you can see on, on the stat sheet, there's two missed penalty kicks yeah. in this match in the very final 10 minutes of this game. However, Pew is able to get the rebound and yeah. she notches her, her second goal right there at that moment, which a um, bit of insurance, quite frankly, yeah. for, the, for the Red Stars. It's just it's frankly, just yeah. this 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 scoreline kind of just get bigger and bigger, and bigger as the game was trying to wind down. I just I, we were chatting a little bit off mic about it. I was like, that was comedy to me. I'm like, I was kind of cracking up a little bit. Before I, think, I could like type what had happened, I was like, oh. Oh, something else has happened yeah, now. Like, I'll just wait. I'll yeah. just wait and then we'll figure it out as it is. Um, yeah, wild end to, to that one. But I think if for, you know, obviously neutral. And Orlando ends up scoring again. They get yeah. another goal. Leah Pruitt, she notches a goal for Orlando in the 87th minute or so. So Orlando kept fighting until the yeah. very end. Which I love that for, for Pruitt quite uh, quite frankly, just because she's someone who's been doing putting in a lot of work, uh, I think on that in that front line for Orlando Pride team. I think at, at one point prior to the midweek match was was leading the team in like chances created. So it was good to sort of see her um, get get a goal in in this one for for the Pride. But yeah, no, just an exciting. I think if you're a neutral, right, taking a look at this kind of game, you're like, wow, like this is <laughs> what what is happening in uh, in a game like this. But I think. Um, Obviously, if you're if you're the Orlando side of things, you could sort of see the that early part of the first half where maybe the the concept was like, okay, we're not gonna maybe do hit the high press. Maybe we're not gonna, you know, be kind of mid blockish. Maybe we're gonna just sort of see what the game presents us. And then unfortunately, the Red Stars very got on the scoreboard very early. So there was this sort of chasing of a game, kind of probably much earlier than the, than Orlando Pride kind of anticipated. But um, I think reserving enough in the tank to sort of make a run of things at the final at the final stages there. But again, uh, I loved it. Loved it for all the for all the neutrals and loved it for us. Cause I think we both had Chicago picked in this yes. one and when we were talking about our previews and making our picks. So this one was nice to cap off for the, our attacking third duo here. Where we're both just like, yes, this is nice. We get to look exactly. like we made the right pick here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I agree. Being a neutral in this one and as just a fan to kind of get NWSL people in what a great game to watch. Yeah, right on. Let's let's just move on to uh, some of the other games that were taking place here because there's there's several that we have to get through. Let's take a look at some of these expansion sides, everybody. The expansion sides are staying on top of the standings after this weekend's matches. Let's start with Angel City versus Kansas City Current. Maybe we should start with the picks that we made in this one, Lisa. Got to expose ourselves. Okay, I love this. So Kansas City, you had Kansas City winning, and I had a draw in this match uh, between Casey and Angel City FC. So um, neither of us were sure. correct in this one because Angel City walks away with the late night win. Maybe like a little bit of different chaotic energy. So we're going from the Chicago Orlando game where there was ma like massive goals in these final. <laughs> but we had own goal make an appearance in this match, a, a narrow win yeah. for Angel City against Kansas, a Kansas City side that is still looking for a regular season win. And we're also still looking for that as well uh, from them. Uh, but Chris and Press just just getting it done, just being Holy relentless, cow. just on the ball, in the box, forcing it in there and forcing the own goal. And that... Did if you're if you're Kansas City, you're just like, okay, like this is clearly not going our way. How do we try to get back into this? And and it wasn't for lack of effort, but the scoreline just just didn't go their way. Exactly. I mean, this game was um, interesting because it really was a lot of just Kristen Press. I think Simone Charlie had a good run as well um, uh, in this combination play with Press. But uh, how the goal happened and un folded essentially it was press on a bit of a breakaway and the ball actually gets caught up under her and I'm might be misremembering this but because this was yesterday and I watched four games today but <laughs> he then like is about to cross it in and it gets slid out from under her and honestly on the yeah. replay it looks like it goes out of bounds honest to god depends on I the angles right i mean does. there's no var so it doesn't happen the broadcasters didn't talk about it so it clearly wasn't a point of contention but from the camera angles that i saw 
could have crossed the line. However, Press is somehow able to slide and she gets this cross off. And I, my heart is breaking a bit here for Taylor Leach for Kansas yeah. City because as this ball comes into the center of the goal, she has no pressure on her. It was Press as Angel City versus five Kansas City players. And there was no one else from Angel City really streaking or forcing this to happen. And it was a really unlucky touch by Taylor Leach that finds the back of the net. And I could just see on her face, and, and they showed it on the replay, just yeah. – pure devastation from Leach. And and that hurts. For a team in Kansas City that's been struggling throughout this regular season, that's just another dagger in their heart, and, and that's really rough. We They had a great opportunity on a set piece, um, which was an incredible save by Didi Heracic, goalkeeper for Angel City, a, a great little touch over the crossbar. But if that was another uh, rookie goal that we saw on a set piece opportunity, because Racing Louisville has been doing that back to back, and and if Alex Luera put that away, we know that Luera can nail a free kick like yeah. that. So that's something that uh, the opponents are circling. Don't I think, bow I too think, close. Luera can put this on frame. I love that. You, I love that you brought that point up because I think th this has to like on the Kansas City side of things. This has to be such a. I would imagine such a frustrating result to walk away with, you know, and this is a team that we saw go, you know, go and win their challenge cup group stage, host a, host a semifinal, right. Stay and have a competitive semifinal. Yeah. Um, uh, but fall just short of, of getting to, to that cup final and navigating this, these early parts of the regular season and coming out with, these strong individual performances. And I think like when you have these types of results, when you're still on the hunt for your win in a regular season, that that's what maybe they're sort of circling or that's what they're pointing out in, ter or in terms of finding like your silver linings out of this. So like maybe it's, you know, a young rookie like Loera, like still going out there and having really good performances uh, in a, you know, a player like Elise Bennett, who is, working her way back into form, like even though like was questionable for at, at one point with, with the team is still trying to have an impact in, in, in the attack. Like these are little things I think that Kansas city is maybe sort of, can, you know, kind of hang their hat on for now. And, and they doing continue it without to navigate things. big players, they Kansas city got hit with yeah. COVID protocol right before this match. They were yeah. four out due to COVID protocol and then a yeah. handful others out for uh, injuries in that sense. And and I think Lola Bonta was a huge missing piece in yeah. the midfield for Kansas city going against angel city that has Savannah McCaskill, Danny Weatherhill in the midfield that, uh, Lola Bonta against Danny Weatherholt, that would have been a really great matchup. And and we didn't get to see that because Labonta was out due to COVID protocol. Um, I, I know that you were talking about Kansas City and how they did so well throughout the Challenge Cup. Just a little fun fact here. Kansas City is number 11 right now, second to last in the standings. However, they have one point. The team that Kansas City lost to in the semifinals of the Challenge Cup North Carolina Courage. They have zero points and they are number 12 in the standing. So I would love to see these two teams play each other tomorrow. <laughs> I just am so interested as to kind of how this regular season has taken a turn from the challenge cup. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's um, there are things there, right there. I think there are things there from, from those early weeks in challenge cup that maybe we were like, let's, let's hang on to this. Let's hang on to these little nuggets that we're seeing right now, these challenge cup nuggets and hang on to them and sort of see how things play out in, in the regular season. And I think for Kansas city that there was enough there, like we, we saw at least Bennett putting together these performances uh, in challenge cup, Loera putting, you know, Victoria Pickett and what sort of how rapidly she's become an integral part yes. of this Kansas city, uh, current squad. But there's also your experienced veteran players that, you know, are that you lean on heavily and not having a, a Lola Bonta available in a game like this, where maybe sometimes a team like angel city can struggle a little bit in that middle third and not having somebody like a Labonta able to kind of you know, combat that or sort of cancel that out is, is I think a big loss. So uh, tough. I think when you have those narrow score lines to begin with, but then I think even, even more tough, I think when it comes on a, on an own goal, but I, I got to shout out angel city. They are doing unbelievable things in this yeah. early part of the season. They are making things happen with how little they are being given. It's this very interesting combination of sort of, 
you know, sort of looking at the schedule of head of, ahead of them and just sort of taking advantage of, of what is there in front of them. And oh, I'm, no, in, I'm appreciating some of these small adjustments that, uh, you know, Freya Kuhn is making early in the season, like see, seeing somebody like Lucy on the flank and, and further back because she's able to get more involved in the attack and having to make those adjustments out of necessity at, at some point. Again, the, the, there's a, a bit of the uh, COVID protocol bug going around in the league right now. And, and Angel City has seen that as well with, with Ali Riley at one point, and that's how we saw the adjustment with, with Tyler Lucy. But um, it's sometimes you got to make do with what's in front of you, and Angel City, I think, is capitalizing on that right uh, now and it's paying it, off for them. They exactly are. I mean, having Tyler Lucy in the back is is huge. They did something on social where she like called her brother or something saying like, hey, they want me to play left back. What do I do? Um, so like <laughs> that's amazing. And the fact that she's been able to seamlessly step in there and be a good defender while also having that attacking mindset is huge. I, I told you about Kansas City. They're 11 in the standings right now. Angel City, number two in the standings uh, behind – I think the team we're going to talk about next, Sandra. I don't yeah, know let's talk about them. I love it. Behind number one, San Diego love, Wave FC. I love a really smooth transition. North Carolina <laughs> Courage versus San Diego Wave FC. The expansion side's doing what they got to get done. Alex Morgan had her say in this game, another narrow scoreline for another Cali side. San Diego take this one, 1-0 one in all three points. North Carolina Courage, another team. Found success in Challenge Cup. Still trying to translate that over here into the regular season. And uh, I'm a little curious as to maybe how their summer is going to look because we're still we're still in May. It's still it's it's still technically spring. But I think when it comes to sort of seeing, I guess what we, we could consider more established, mm -hmm. uh, maybe elite teams, you know, teams that have had a history or a record of success in this league. You think of your Portland Thorns franchises or your North Carolina Courage franchises or, you know, your Chicago Red Stars, teams who have like constantly been in playoff conversations and constantly within the top four of the league. And sometimes the beginnings of their seasons don't necessarily mirror the end of their season. And I think we're maybe seeing some of these early hiccups right now uh, for maybe a team like North Carolina courage. We talked about it with Kansas city. Got to talk about it with North Carolina courage. They also uh, had been going through a little bit of things with co players out on COVID protocol, a different game for, for this one because they had more of what they could consider some of their key players available in this one. We talked a little bit about if we were going to see Casey Murphy in this match. And quite frankly, with the exception of the, the very narrow scoreline, thought she had a pretty good game yes. for North Carolina. Curse. She's looking back to form and up to speed, I think. I was exactly going to say that. I have that written down in my notes. We were so unsure if Casey Murphy was playing due to necessity or because she's back and she's ready. And I think she had a much better game. Um this weekend against San Diego than she did in the midweek game for North Carolina. Just to, maybe a little bit of nerves that she shook off midweek that now uh, we were able to see a lot more of in this match. I mean, despite the narrow score line and, and the one goal, of course, coming from Alex Morgan, is that that's five goals now in four games, the last three games or something. So incredible stats from Alex Morgan. She's done such a tremendous job. Um, carrying the San Diego team offensively, frankly. Yeah. And I think defensively, we have to look at San Diego and what they've been able to do, especially without Abby Dahlkamper in that back line because she was yeah. out for a while. She was actually back made available throughout this match and then uh, not being played, but it's Naomi Gurma in the center back, the rookie yeah. for Casey Stoney that has really done a tremendous job sitting in front of Kaylin Sheridan and, and really – Owning that center back role, doing yeah. such a nice job there is Gurma. Um, right before this game happened, there was an announcement made by the NWSL um, committee saying that Kelsey Turnbow had an unsportsmanlike conduct in the last match. So she is to miss the next San Diego Wave match. So bef right before this game, Kelsey Turnbow is now out for Casey Stoney and for San Diego. And although Kelsey Turnbow isn't starting playing 90 every game and, and not scoring all the goals. She's a vital part of this team because she gets consistent minutes. She's a 
rest, honestly, in the midfield for some other players and to not have her and have to lean a little bit more on some of these other players in Van Eggman and, and Taylor, Jody Taylor, um, Taylor Korniak as well. But yeah, throughout this match, I was impressed with Meredith Speck as well for North Carolina, despite not getting on the board uh, for North Carolina. I was very impressed with Speck and how she's been able to step in in the absence of of a player like Caroline. You know, I I was looking at this game for to sort of see like maybe this this was going to be the game that that North Carolina was able to get out there. And even if they didn't get a win, maybe just get a result against an expansion side that perhaps is still trying to figure some things out. At the very least, maybe see a, a different type of competitive battle in the middle third between mm-hmm. these two teams. Because I feel like with with the Wave, I think very, very early on, a lot of the, the storyline and the narrative around them and what we were seeing on the pitch was, gosh, like if they had this, maybe another piece in that middle third, you know, what would they look like? But something else I think has happened for them over this early phase of the season. And it's Taylor Korniak being trusted to take care of some things in the middle here. Um, I think we, the, probably the biggest example of this is we got to talk about this goal and how it came to life, which was why it was, you know, a little bit intriguing. Why that, you know, that watching that announcement come out ahead of this game, the, the disciplinary committee went back and took a look on sportsmanlike conduct players unavailable and we saw really early Challenge Cup, early weeks of, <laughs> of of the season that maybe there was a little bit of uh, I don't maybe to call it competition for the position. Uh, we saw Turnbow in, in a lower role in the midfield. We've seen Cornea come in and, and sort of coming in and seeing how either of these players were going to be looking in the system that Casey Stoney is is trying to develop with this team. And we've been seeing more of Korniak over this time. And in this match, there was this very peculiar moment where it was a kind of a little bit of a 1v1 Korniak in Dabinia. Uh, there was, the official was kind of close for comfort, but we see a moment here where these two players kind of going for the ball and Dabinia lo- unfortunately loses that battle Mm -hmm. expresses some frustration looks like she was frustrated with sort of kind of the you know corny at kind of utilizing the uh, official there's maybe a little bit of a pick in some sense and and kind of stops a little bit and expresses the frustration and all of a sudden in a second corny finds a lane feeds morgan who uh, was just wide open to drift into the behind the line there got played into the box and put that away. You leave her that available. She's going to make you pay. And all of a sudden, there was also the timing of this. They scored this goal right before halftime. Mm-hmm. So now you've got a, a, a courage side that has to come out and chase for the remainder of the second half. Exactly. I think it's so important that we talk about what the lead up to that goal and and potentially using the official as a pick, as a block, as a as a dummy decoy that's allowed because the ref is technically a part of the field. And yeah. like if the ball hits off the ref, it doesn't stop like that. You just play on. It's like, if well, the ball stop, hit off could, they the could stop the play. Flag. They like, like deliberately get in the way. Keep playing. Like, yes. And they're not deliberately getting in the way, but like as a center mid that happens, you dance around the, the ref all the time. I do it like every night in my, when I play soccer, (laughs) they're always in the way. So that's kind of how it happened. And the fact that Korniak was able to still, I I was impressed with, yes, she had a lot of time and space Korniak did, but she still played it quickly and she's able to find such a great seam to lead Alex Morgan, who yeah, was wide open, but I mean, a great shot from Morgan to, to net this pass Casey Murphy for sure. You know, uh, the courage were, had a tough, tough first half there. They weren't able to get much on goal, if, if anything. And then you saw all of a sudden the numbers from the first half to the second half in this match, obviously leveling out a little bit more, more shots for the courage to sort of close things out 15 to nine. But ultimately both of these teams recording just two shots on goal and the wave making one of their two count in this one. And Alex Morgan just still putting together a very long resume ahead of this CONCACAF W championship that's going to take place in July. So what's something that we're going to keep an eye on for sure, but all three points for San Diego keeps them 
relevant and on top of the standing still very early on in this season for sure. But we've got more games to get through. Shout out to both Cali teams getting it done this weekend with a narrow scoreline. We're going to get back to the rest of these games right after a quick break. Greetings, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Where the hell is he? What the hell? I'm right here. Maverick, the kind is headed for extinction. Smoke in the air! Smoke in the air! Maybe so, sir. But not today. Top Gun Maverick, rated PG-13. All right, let's keep talking about some slim score lines. We talked about the two Cali sides picking up narrow wins, 1-0, but there were still some some pretty slim score lines in the remainder of the matches that we're going to be chatting about here. Let's talk about New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC versus Racing Louisville FC. Racing on the road in this one. And go ahead and pick up all three points against Gotham FC. A 1-0 scoreline in this one. Laura Millay getting on the scoreboard for racing. Lisa, I got I to gotta say, we were I want to put it here on the live. We were chatting a little bit about it off mic. And we were talking a little bit about this, this matchup in particular. And even we even talked a little bit about in our in our in our preview a bit. For this game. I think I, 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 please correct me if I'm wrong when it comes to, to the picks in this one. What did I have in the picks for this one? You had a draw between a Racing draw. Louisville and Gotham FC. I had Gotham taking the win in this one. Listen, I'll be honest. I'll always call us out on what we did. Listen, you had Gotham in this one and I had a draw, but that's because I am still not seeing what I would like to see from Gotham. That is a little bit different for me in this match. And I really feel for the team because I was watching this Gotham FC side go up against racing Louisville. And we're talking about getting more looks in the, in the final third, looking a little bit more dynamic, creating chances. We're talking five post shots in this match, which ties a record. They quite frankly, so close. <laughs> it, it's again, I cannot come on this show and be like, oh, yeah, it's for lack of effort. That's bull. And I'm not going to say that. I rarely <laughs> find myself saying that about any NWSL team. That's simply not true when we're talking about this league. But I got to I, I felt for him a little bit. I was yeah. like, gosh, this like sometimes there's a certain like, look, it's a professional soccer. So there's a certain amount of, of tactics, skill, intelligence, right? All of that that you have to have in this. But it's it's a sport like any other sport. And sometimes luck is involved. And I hate to even do it, but what an unlucky yeah. match when you're looking at some of these opportunities for them. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, I have to give a shout out to Emily Davidson in our chat right now. She says, guys, Gotham is not winning. Stop it. <laughs> Which is <laughs> hilarious Emily. because we keep picking them. She's calling us out on it. I mean, because they have the pieces. Emily, they hit the crossbar five oh. times. Christy Mewis got so I love close. it. I mean, Mewis <laughs> could have scored uh, two. I'm going to give her two of the ones that she did not put away. But should doesn't count in soccer that doesn't count as a goal if you should have scored and they did not I I also think racing Louisville got really lucky on their goal as well because they know frankly this was a great team build up play like there was a lot of great pieces in this goal for racing Louisville it came early in this game 13th minute um which is really good for racing Louisville to be able to start on that quick front foot, um, be much more attacking minded, which is something Kim Bjorkegren is wanting to do this year, not be so defensive. And for this great team build up goal, the ball was moving quick. I mean, Gotham wasn't defending. They were defending late. They were stepping late throughout the entirety of this game. And Jess McDonald gets this ball and it's a beautiful cross across the top of the 18. Lauren Malay wide open on the back post. And she's able to, to net this one. It actually hits the top the the top netting inside of the goal. And really, it wasn't that well struck. I, I, I'm going to be honest here because it was a lucky bounce that this goal went in for Racing Louisville. Extremely lucky. Yeah. Unlucky, excuse me, unlucky for Michelle Betos, goalkeeper for Gotham, who got her first minutes in goal against her old team in Racing Louisville. And, and Betos is an incredible goalkeeper, but this – this ball kind of bounces over Lauren Malay's foot and she ends up still getting a piece of it and enough of it that it goes 
into the goal. Um, but then on the Gotham side of things, so many off the post. Christy Mewes had a wide open shot, which an incredible ball from Caprice Didasco out of the back, lofted over the top to break all of Racing Louisville's press, which was the best way for Gotham to execute that is just send balls over the top. And, and we saw runs from um, Naho Kawasumi and, and Monahan. Anamanu got on a lot of balls. And ultimately, Mewis gets on the end of this one. And this is the one that she should have scored. It was her left foot, and she just rockets it. It, it was a field goal, good for three points, but not good enough in, in, in soccer on the ground to, to find the back of the net, frankly. I was disappointed in, in that. I, I hear you. I feel you 100%. And I'm still cracking up about what Emily said. We, we want to see it. We want to see it. That's why we keep picking him. But look, to the victor goes the spoils, right? We got we to gotta exactly. chat about, about racing Louisville a, a little bit. I'm I'm here for Jessica McDonald's supremacy. I I am loving what this player has rapidly become for this franchise, uh, already showing in these early parts of the NWSL season why she was such a huge acquisition for them. And I'm said it before, and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm, I'm really loving this sort of kind of early chemistry that we're seeing between McDonald's specifically and Lauren Millay, uh, talking to her during our, our preview segment when we were saying, Hey, we're going to do all these team previews in the off season. And when we got to racing Louisville's, we talked to Lauren Millay and we asked her about Jess McDonald and how eager, and she's talked about how eager she was to work with and play with Jess McDonald again was with her on North Carolina courage, but was a much younger player then and was eager to have the opportunity to learn more from her both on but specifically off the pitch as well just like this concept of like what yeah. it means to be a pro or or be a professional in nwsl and i really love that this was this kind of connection between the two of them to link up for this goal in this game i hope we continue to see it develop a little bit more and I think in this type of match to sort of get <laughs> to get this goal on on the road against, quite frankly, a Gotham FC side that's still trying to figure some things out. Yeah. There has to there was there had to have been some areas in which they were you know uh, making their game day preparations and said, listen, if we can maybe find moments of this game to press. Yeah, it was... and for some discomfort that maybe we can make some things happen because that's what looking at this racing Louisville side, there are moments where we see that mm -hmm. and they're, they look like this incredibly active team. And they have these stretches from these 15 minute, maybe even 20 minute stretches where they're like very active, higher up the pitch, trying to be, you know, applying the pressure. Then it wanes off a little bit. And I'm just like, you know, what happens to that? But that's tough if you're exactly. when you're when you're trying to do that for a whole uh 90 minutes but i think in this game it maybe was a little bit more nerve-wracking for me watching because i'm like god any minute here any second here gotham is going to get one of these to go in and it just didn't happen they game. had so many breakaway opportunities that I, I wanted them to just go a little bit faster harder stronger no. i don't know i was like it, it was just those moments where they could have uh gotten goals and frankly just did not put it away but uh, you mentioned the <laughs> jess mcdonald lauren malay combination i love that and even on the celebration you could see jess mcdonald was like that was good let's do it again yeah. and malay is just like so excited and celebrating which is what she should be but then mcdonald is there to kind of be the the leader of that group as a 10-year vet yeah. in the league to take racing louisville to new heights yeah, and it's a team with a lot of young, much younger players, right? Yeah. Emily right. Fox still having really good games for this team. Uh, there are two rookies in, in Jalen Howell and Savannah DeMello. I, I really like what they're presenting in in the middle third for for racing. But you know, it's a long season, and there's teams that have other more experienced players maybe a in the middle. So we're going to see season. what happens. So you got to, you know, in this league, it's tough to get points. We hear these players say this all the time, and they're walking away with all three and a high place in the standings for them. Let's move on to another game that had a very, very slim scoreline, 0-0, zero, zero, in fact. Uh, the third meeting for these two teams in a month. Uh, and last. Final meeting. And last, and last. Final meeting for the regular season. O.L. Rain hosted Washington Spirit at Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. These two teams played out to a 0-0 zero, zero draw. And uh, listen, we talked about it on the preview. Lisa, 
What did we pick? What, what, what were we looking at? You had a draw between OL Reign and Washington, and I had OL Reign getting uh, their first win uh, against <sighs> this team. And they Look. neither. Well, your your draw happened, but OL Reign still searching for their first win over Washington Spirit. The Listen, rivalry I know, continues. I know for for us on you know on, on this side of things where we're watching this type of game, we 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 love it. We love the energy we're feeding off of it. We're like, yes, this is awesome. It's it's this kind of you know this is special type of rivalry between these two teams that isn't fixated on geographical region or location, right? It's uh, it's two teams that just go out there and like to to battle each other, and the fact that we've seen so many of these matches this early on between these two sides, I'm a little curious if they even are going to meet each other in a potential uh, postseason battle. Who who knows? So we, we'll just, we'll, the we literally time. have to wait now because yes, that's it's so the much only time longer. We would see them again. The fact that they've played each other in such quick succession at the start of this season between Challenge Cup and and now the regular season. There was so much familiarity, almost yeah. almost too much that you could predict. And and throughout this match, I mean, starting lineups, we, we like to look at those and kind of break it down. Ashley Sanchez higher up the pitch higher again. Up. Chris Ward for Washington Spirit leaving a bit of a hole. Um, we talked about player availability. Andy Sullivan available in this one. Kelly O'Hara. Yeah available for Washington Spirit in this one, uh, limited minutes for both of those players, but we did both see them get in, which is I incredible to see, um, especially Andy Sullivan coming back after a tough injury that she was out for such a long time with that one. But having Ashley Sanchez up the field is, it's choice. It's a choice. I love that's that, all Lisa. I'm going to say because I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with Chris Ward recently and, and I haven't called one of their games recently. And maybe there's a very good rhyme or reason for that. And maybe we're, we know that Ashley Sanchez can produce goals. Yeah. That is obvious. And maybe having her higher up the pitch is something that they're hoping to get a little bit more out of her and having more goals in her. But being closer to the goal, you just get them out of her a little bit. But this just opens up such a big hole in the midfield, especially without Andy Sullivan in there. And that's what is missing right now for Washington. Um, but yeah. I, I, lo I loved this game, frankly. We're I talking did. about what's what's mission, what's missing for, for the spirit. I think when we're looking at the rain, Lisa, we got to talk about what's missing for them. And it's just straight up goals. They cannot score. It's 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 like are they snake bit right now a little bit like I, I maybe and maybe the same thing can can be echoed for a team like like Gotham FC but when we're just looking and keeping this focus on, on the rain and and the talent that they have on their pitch and the numbers that they produce in these games we're talking they close out this one with with twenty shot with shot twenty shots and eight attempts on target and, and none of them going in. And then, you know, again, the, the scoreless uh, draw that they had with, with, with thorns, you know, mm -hmm. 17 shots there and only, you know, a handful on, on, on target there. It's just uh, it, it, the finishing just isn't there for this team right now. And uh, it, sure. Everyone could say that it's, it's early, but is, is there a certain, is there a timeline? Is there a timeline here where, where you look at this team and if they're still producing this similar results, do you say that this, this is concerning and has to be, you know, addressed in some type of way? I think the lack of scoring goals is is always concerning because as a team defensively, you cannot rely on your defense, your goalkeepers to win you games. That That's supposed to be your last resort. That's supposed to be, hey, thanks, you bailed us out this time because we only got one and you kept a clean sheet. That can't be the solution throughout an entirety of a season when – you need to win games. You can't just rely on shutouts like in a match like this. Um, a, a lot of people giving high praise to Aubrey Kingsbury. Yes, an incredible goalkeeper, a, a really good game by her in goal by Washington Spirit. But so much of it reflects on the goal scorers for OL Reign and the fact that there really yeah. isn't one. I mean, even throughout the Challenge Cup, all of their goals were split amongst yeah. 10 different players or so which is, is a positive thing when you're getting a lot of different players opportunities to score goals and they're able to put them away. But when you don't have one person that can consistently find the back of the net, that's a danger. That's a, that's a, a red flag in your team. Um, I think Bethany Bowser could have been that for them or still could be for that, 
for them. Balser actually ended up going down and with a bit of an injury throughout this match. I don't have an update on her personally. I, I don't know if you do, but that was a bit scary and a bit concerning to see her getting helped off the field. Um, it, it did not look great. She looked to be in a lot of pain. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're with, when one of the thing, one of the questions that you're asking yourself as a club in terms of, you know, if it's something related to the goal scoring or, or, the, or the lack of finishing, that that is not something that you're excited about for an answer. Having one of your more dynamic strikers and forwards okay. come off of a tough game, uh, you know, in, in, some, in some pain or, or injured, that's uh, that's not necessarily going to help this team at the moment find more answers when it comes to the finishing, um, especially with a player like a bosser who has has the ability to to be clinical at times and has the ability yeah. to kind of score from wherever. This is a player that we've seen pretty pretty even in the final third. You could get him with her head, left or right yeah. foot, you know, and, and uh, having, even though the team is sort of hitting some, some offensive struggles right now, that's definitely not something that you want to see happen uh, in a game like this as you're searching for, for the production. But uh, again, another team that we're talking about, we saw find finding success mm -hmm. in a challenge cup and uh, still looking for a way to kind of translate that in, in the regular season. It's uh it's going to be something that we got to keep an eye on uh, for sure. But uh, another result, it's not a loss. It's a point for this oil rain side in, in the column and uh, for the Washington spirit as well. And, and like Rose Lavelle said, we had an interview with her this week, everybody. So if you haven't checked it out, go out, go in and go and listen to it. Uh, if you get the chance after this, but I'm sure they're, they're tired of each other. Uh, yeah. Rose Lavelle mentioning it's like, that's enough. <laughs> Let's move yeah. on. Let's and uh Exactly. I'm like, do we freeze on the line? No, lot? sorry, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and not just tired of each other, but also tired of, of playing and tired yeah. of going back and forth so much and, and just needing a bit of a break with so many quick turnaround games. Um, and now that, that happens a little bit at least. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this team moving forward and the spirit as well, because they had a match heavy load as well. Oh, yeah. uh, hopefully they'll come out on the uh, more positive end of it moving forward. But last one for the night, everybody, Portland Thorns FC versus Houston Dash. We had to save this one. We had to save this one because this was another one where I think that we did not get the prediction right. And this one, I think I was going Thorns in this one. Yeah, we both had Thorns. Oh, man. Down. Listen, Houston Dash said, pause that. On hold, please. They took the win in this one. 2-0 goals from Rachel Daly and Sophie Schmidt. Man, Portland Thorns. Maybe maybe similar uh, similar questions that we're asking uh, uh, from O.L. Reign, but also of, of Portland Thorns as well. No, yeah. I think Portland can score. Okay. I think Portland knows how to score and they can score. I, I honestly don't think it's the same type of questions. I think that more of the focus in this match for me was on Houston because this is a team yeah. that is incredibly unpredictable and they can use it to their advantage in, in a match like this against Portland and come out and, and have Rachel Daly on fire. Um, the goal that Rachel Daly scored, her composure, her commitment to swag and to being just such a threat in front of the net and knowing, hey, there's two, three defenders on me. It's fine. I'll make them all fall to the ground and find the back of the net. So easy. That's that's Rachel Daly to a T. And the unpredictability about Houston Dash is that we haven't seen this team play this yeah. type of game in many games, in weeks. Yeah weeks and then the fact that something can happen they flip a switch maybe it was traveling to providence park and playing in that type of arena where everyone is fired up for your opponent that it, it's a chip on your shoulder and it's like no we're gonna prove these suckers wrong and and everyone that picked against us and that's exactly what we saw i mean the rachel daly goal was great the sophie schmidt goal i'm gonna say a little mm -hmm. bit of luck on this one listen Wild angle. I love a goal happening from a wild, wild angle. When I, I saw it happening, that I don't listen, think she meant to shoot that. When I saw it happening in real time, I was like, 
gosh, that looks awfully familiar. Where did I see that before? And Katie Johnson scored a similar goal in a similar area during the 2021 mm-hmm. semifinal against against Bixby there. It's a it's a, such an awkward angle, but apparently a sweet spot. Maybe if opposition are looking to to try a curious angle, just like if, if you have the opportunity to just try it with, with the time and the space and why not and see what happens. I think Sophie Smith at one point, you know, looking with the body language a little bit like, whoa like that one and i love the the celebration uh afterwards after a type of goal like that but it, it was a goal that provided you know a little bit of, of insurance a little bit of a cushion for for this team uh, on the road you know doing some good things the, the dash are uh maybe surprising some other people maybe even surprising themselves a, a little bit you know who I think so. who knows it's it's early in the season to where it's like you can when i think about this goal from from Sophie Smith, it's like, why not just try some things and exactly. just sort of see um, what happens? But I, I mean, I loved it. The the timing of when these goals happened as well. I, I love that they got this this goal in 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 the winding minutes of the first half. You know, Shopping on the road, time, yeah. you have yeah, you you're forcing the home side to to chase, and loving the link up with you know Nichelle Prince and Rachel Daly. We talked a lot in in previous. Um, episodes and in our preview of this Houston Dash team specifically that we wanted to see that 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 this sort of frontline trio of, of a daily of of Prince of Sanchez that can be so much fun and has a lot of potential to rival other attacks in the league so whenever some combination of this trio is is looking as if they're firing on, on cylinders i think it's very exciting and very good for for houston but also seeing this goal from sophie smith happen past the hour mark that's 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 a very important time to be able to sort of you know ma- ins- make sure that you sort of get this go ahead go and get that insurance you know as you're sort of taking a game like this maybe in phases if you're the visiting side exactly. on the road so um good win i think for, for them Huge. And and you mentioned um, for Houston and Schmidt getting the goal right after the 60 minute mark is big because a team like Portland in the 70th minute can still come back and score a couple goals. They can get something going. They can find something, especially with the home crowd on their side throughout a match like this. So a little bit of insurance from Sophie Schmidt. And I mean, it was an incredible goal. And we don't see that from Sophie Schmidt a lot. She's not a player that is finding the back of the net. She's that final pass player. That's who you want to get the ball to when you need someone to split the seams and and lay it in beautifully on a dime to a forward running in. But Schmidt can do it all herself. Um, yeah, this this was an interesting game. It was a crazy game. Neither of us had them pegged, but no. Houston they walk away with three points out of Providence Park. Wow. You, you love you love to see it. It's it's early, Lisa, but I I know you, you you've got an eye on it. What are what are the standings for folks to sort of take a look at before we close out. I love running off these standings, leading the way, both expansion sides, number one and number two, San Diego wave sits at number one with 12 points, angel city, number two, nine points racing Louisville, third place, fourth place is Houston dash. They're three points against Portland jumped them up in the standings. Number five, Orlando pride, number six, Chicago red stars. Um, this seven through 12, everyone listen yep. up. This is a week four or five of the NWSL. Number seven, Portland Thorns. Number eight, Washington Spirit. Number nine, Gotham FC. 10, OL Reign. 11, Kansas City. And coming in in last place, number 12 with zero points, North Carolina Courage. Still searching for first win, their first tie in this regular season. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. Look. Another content note for everyone before we close out. I mentioned it at the top of the episode. I'm going to mention it here again. We're going to keep the lives going. We love whenever you all get a chance to hang out with us and get our reactions to things. So we're going to be going live on Thursdays for the next few weeks uh, due to there being some midweek matches on the NWSL schedule for the foreseeable future. So make sure you tune in with us then. Thanks so much for listening tonight, though, and for always listening to Attacking Third. You can follow us on TikTok 
TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. We're live, baby. We're also available as video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash Attacking Third. If you got questions for me or Lisa, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with your question, and we'll answer it during our mailbag segment. And we'll be back with more previews for NWSL action for Sancho Herrera and Lisa Roman. This was Attacking Third.